Welcome to our practice test review for chapters 4, 5, and 6. This comes from Math and Focus, our 6th grade textbook, and it aligns nicely to kind of the foundation we're trying to build for our 7th grade math students. So these are the chapters that we've introduced since the beginning of the school year uh, to get you ready for 7th grade curriculum. Uh, I don't remember today, uh, on November 12, 2018, if we assigned odds or evens, but it doesn't really matter to me because uh, whatever it is, I know that I want you to be exposed to about half of the problems just so that you are practicing and looking ahead at what's going to be on that test. So this isn't a guarantee, this is just a sampling, and I'm just going to take a look at this first um, review with you where it starts talking about ratios. Well, I guess for today I'm going to focus in on odds just because I don't honestly remember unfortunately, which one we said we would do. So today my video will be on the odds. Um, we might skim through a couple things that I think are very doable, and we might focus more on those word problems where I know that my students have stated a lot of concern. So first section, write the ratios. Well, number one is an odd number. There are 28 video discs and nine music discs on a shelf. The ratio of the number of video discs to the number of music discs is blank to blank. Well, I want you to tune into this piece, video discs, compared to music discs, there's a certain order to this, and we have to follow order when we talk about ratios. So what number belongs to video discs? Hopefully you say 28. And what number belongs to music discs? Hopefully you identify that's the nine. I will caution you, don't circle this, don't call this your final answer, unless you've checked to see if you can simplify. So I'll leave you to think about that. Is this a final answer? If so, you can circle it and say ta-da. If not, take another step and simplify. All problems when you take a test from me are worth multiple points. So showing your work is one of them. Simplifying might be another. And a final answer, of course, is also worth points. Let's fast forward here to number three and four, this section, where it says state whether each of the following can be expressed as a ratio. Well, I know you could write yes or no and just move on, but that would be pretty risky in my opinion because it doesn't show much thought. So if this was on the test, I would expect that each of these would be worth a couple of points meaning that you would actually show me whether or not you can compare pounds to yards. Well, pounds, what is that measuring? Well, if you're looking in your planner, perhaps, or you're thinking back, you know that pounds are talking about a weight measurement. So maybe weight or mass. You know that yards, if you're looking in your planner, maybe on those math pages at page uh, R8 and R9 and R10, you can do some comparing and you'll see that yards are measuring a linear length. So I might talk about linear length or I might just say length. Is there any way that I can change my pounds into length? I wish, right? I could be taller. Um, or any way that I can turn my length, my yards, into pounds? No, I don't think so. Those aren't measuring the same types of units. So for this reason, the answer would be no. This cannot be expressed as a ratio. Let's take a look at number four. Notice that we're talking about gallons and quarts. Do take a look at your conversion charts in your planner, or do kind of get online and figure out what are gallons measuring, what are quarts measuring, and then determine if they're measuring the same type of unit, it would be a yes. And maybe you could even convert this then into a ratio in simplest form. So something to think about. I want you first to tell me what type of units these are, and if they are like units or could be written as like units, do so and simplify. That's where you're going to pick up your extra points on that test. Let's move on. Number five and six come from a section that say, write the missing term in each pair of equivalent ratios. I know my students really struggled with this initially. It seems like for whatever reason, um, they forget that this order coincides on either side of this equal sign. The first term still goes with the first term, and the second term still goes with the second term. These are like buddies. They're aligned. So if I know that this 7 and this 49 are both second terms and they're both completed for me, I have to figure out what rule they're using here. Well, 7 to 49 is the same as saying 7 times 7. So I would go back then to my first term and I would say, well, what is 9 times 7? Using the exact same rule, I would be able to fill in this missing piece. Okay. If you were to simplify this, some students will say to me, well, should I simplify? You could, but what's going to happen? It's going to take you right back to the original, and you won't have the missing term for me. So do make sure that your first term gets me to the first term of the second ratio. Do make sure that you give me this missing piece, okay? Even if you decide to simplify it and check to see if it works, make sure that that missing term of the second ratio is still in place. 
Let's see if we can look at the next section here, talking about ratio, moving pretty quickly because this is maybe the most basic um, skills area that we saw during our ratio unit. Well, the last part on this page says, write each ratio in simplest form. So looking at number seven, uh, I need to think about the greatest common factor. I'm going to think about what number divides into 63 and 15 nicely. If you're not sure, um, my sixth grade math students are currently working on t-charts where they look for a common factor. So this would be one way to get there. We know that 63 is the same as 1 times 63, or it's the same as 3 times 21, or maybe it's the same as uh, 7 times uh, 9, and am I missing any? I didn't try 4. No, nope. I didn't try 5, nope. and 8 won't work. I think I've got them. 15 is the same as 1 times 15, or 3 times 5, or that's about it. So looking here, it looks like I can divide both of these numbers by 1 or 3, or I guess that's it. So in this case, I'm going to circle the greatest common factor. It looks like these both divide by 3. Well, when I divide by 3 with the first term, I'm left with 21. When I divide by 3 with the second term, I'm left with this 5. Notice order does matter, so I'm going to get a ratio of 21 to 5 when I'm done. Let's take a quick minute and move on to the more challenging portion of ratio. So on the next page, these are where we introduce those word problems. And I know my students are not loving these word problems. It's making them think. Okay. So let's go ahead and read together. I'm not sure if I'll complete these all the way or if I'll just set them up for you so that you're heading in the right direction. Let's see what it says for solve and show your work. Number 11. The ratio of the number of boys to the number of girls in a theater is 7 to 9. There are 12 more girls than boys in the theater. How many children are in the theater? Well, if I were to break this down, I hope you remember back to a while ago when we first started these, I'm comparing boys to girls. So boys is my first term, girls is my second. I might copy that down right here. Boys to girls. The boys get seven, the girls get nine. If you're looking at the back of your humongous notes packet, that big fat forest that we printed for you early in the year, you will see that it tells you first to draw this model. So I could also do that besides the number form of it. Oops, um, boys, they get seven units. Girls, they get more units, they get nine. Well, I could go ahead and label a couple pieces of this. Um, if I look, it says there are 12 more girls than boys. This is pretty critical. And I notice that this bar is longer. In fact, there are two extra units here. So those two extra units have to represent the 12 girls. Well, where does my question mark go? My unknown. How many children are in the theater? Well, there it's talking about a total. So when I'm done here, I'm going to have to be able to answer how many total students or children are in the theater. I would tell you, like always, chase the number. So the only number I have to work with, honestly, is this 12 in my bar model. And this 12 belongs to two units. So we're going to take our 12 girls and we're going to divide them into two groups or two units. Hopefully you'll be able to find a number value that will fit into every single one of these units. And when you're done, you're going to take that number value and apply it to both the boys and girls and find a total number of children. So. There are blank children in the theater. I'll let you go ahead and figure that out. Again, I gave you a good setup. I am going to give points for bar models. I am going to give points for your work to find a unit rate. So that's what this would be called, a unit rate or a unit value. And I also will give work for a final answer, which again requires word form. Let's take a look at number 12 together. There are 350 red flowers in a room. There are 70, no, there are 70 more yellow flowers than red flowers. There are 140 fewer white flowers than yellow flowers. What is the ratio of the number of red flowers to the yellow flowers to the white flowers? Oh my goodness, that's a lot of information. In fact, I noticed that we're comparing quite a few things. The first thing I hear is there are 350 red flowers in the room. And there are 70 more yellow flowers uh, than red. And there are 140 fewer white than yellow. 
So I kind of want to set this up real quick. I'm comparing red to yellow to white. And clearly I'm not working in the right color scheme, but it will still work. If I know that the red represents how many flowers? 350. I would record it here. Next sentence said there are 70 more yellow flowers than red. So that's like saying, here's my red, but I need more to it. 70 more. So this is like 350 plus 70. I could figure out the total for that in a minute if I needed to. Next it says there are 140 fewer white flowers, fewer than yellow. Okay, so whatever that total bar is, I'm going to take away 140. So there's 140 fewer. So it's like this 140 is going to go away and I'm going to be left with this many white flowers. What do they go on to ask me? What is the ratio of the number of red flowers to yellow flowers to white flowers when you're done? So red to yellow to white. Remember, order matters. Well, here I don't really have units. I really have quantities or values to work with. So I already know the value for red. It's 350. It was given in the problem. Next, I need to work on this yellow. So 350 plus 70 more. These are combined. Well, I'll be able to fill that in once I add. And the last term, the third term here, is the white. So notice I'm going to have to take whatever this distance is, or this total of 350 plus 70 more, and I'm going to have to subtract 140 from it to see what's remaining right about here in my bar model. So you'll have three terms. That's about as far as I'm going to take this one, but I will really caution you, you do need to give me words back. And you also need to make sure that this is in simplest form. So maybe you will find that all of these end in zero in a minute. I don't know if they do, but they might. If so, that means that they would share our greatest common factor of hmm, 10. Hopefully you're thinking that they might divide by 10. Or maybe you see that they all end in something even. Well, you're going to simplify till you get this to simplest form, and then you're going to give me a final answer. So the ratio of red to yellow to white flowers is blank to blank to blank. And that's about as far as I'm going to take this one. Um, I feel like I already set it up for you quite a bit. Notice you're getting points on this type of problem on the test. I'm looking for bar models with good labels. I'm looking for your work and maybe simplifying if you can, because you might be able to simplify here. I'm also looking for a word form of your answer. Good, moving on to number 13. And again, I remember we said we we're only doing half of these, but I know these word problems have been fighting with my students. So for that reason, I probably will tackle all of the ratio word problems with you right now. I want to make sure that you're feeling confident if you run into something like this. And no, these aren't the only possibilities for a test, right? You could be asked all kinds of things about ratio, but this is a good start. Ziggy just got really foggy. Come on, Ziggy. There we go. Number 13. The ratio of the number of cars to the number of motorcycles in a parking lot is 10 to 3. The ratio of the number of motorcycles to the number of vans is 2 to 5. Oh, this is interesting. I noticed that there are two ratios. This is just like that math map that's in the back of that ginormous packet that you were given, that notes packet. And if you take a look, there's something that we can do when we have two ratios. Let's read on. There are 30 vans in the parking lot. How many more cars and vans are there? All right, I think I can handle this. So I'm going to dig in and figure out what the 10 and the 3 belong to. 10 to 3. Well, the first thing they said is that represents the cars to the motorcycles. Cars two motorcycles, C to M will work for me. The next ratio goes on to say uh, 2 to 5. And I need to figure out who owns the 2. So the ratio of the number of motorcycles to the number of vans. So this is motorcycles to vans. Well, this is enough to look at. I noticed that um, I'm going to have to save that 30 vans for in a minute. But what I'm seeing is Something repeats, repeats, repeats. Something looks the same, the same, the same. These motorcycles, motorcycles, motorcycles. So we need to figure out a way to make these numbers agree. Do I have three groups of motorcycles or two groups of motorcycles? Oh my gosh, make up your mind, motorcycles. So what we would do is we would find the LCM, okay? So be thinking of the LCM of three and two. If you remember, that's like counting by threes and counting by twos until we find a common factor. Two, four, six. Oh, I just found it. There we go. We could turn both of these into six units or six groups of motorcycles. So that's exactly what I'll do here. How did I get there? Well, that was like three times two. 
So I also need to double the first term of the ratio. 2 times 10 is 20. So here I have 20 to 6. How about the second ratio? Here I went from 2 to 6 motorcycles again, or groups of motorcycles, but I had to multiply by 3 to get there. So I multiply the second term by 3 also. 6, sorry, 5 times 3 is actually 15. So my new ratio here is 6 to 15. I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to either draw this out or think it out. So if there are 30 vans in the parking lot, well, notice now that they're saying my vans went from 15 to 30. And while I could draw this bar model, I'm not sure that I would want to. Um, it sounds like 30 is going to be quite large. So is there another way that I could show this? How can I make my vans now get to 30? Everything else agrees. My motorcycles agree and we know there were 20 groups of cars. How do I go from 15 vans to 30? Oh, we double this ratio. So if I double the second term of the ratio, I must double the first term of the ratio. But think about this. We wanted these motorcycles to agree a minute ago. So you're going to have to make them agree again. You're going to have to figure out how to get this to 12. And you're going to also affect that first term somehow. Well, we're getting mighty close. I know that 6 times 2 is 12. I know that uh, 20 times 2 is 40. It's like I have some new improved ratios. And again, I'm kind of glad I didn't draw this one. I'm kind of just doing some, um, some math, some steps, to trying to show you my procedure working down the board instead of a bar model. So you would get work for showing me the LCM. You would get work for showing me another uh, common multiple, um, getting these both to 12s. You would get work for showing me, of course, what rule you're using to change these numbers over in your ratios. But the next step is to try to figure out how to handle the rest of the problem. So we took care of the 30 vans. There they are, 30 vans. But how many more cars than vans? How many more cars than vans is the question. Okay. And when they say how many more, I hope you're thinking back to your elementary days where your teacher had those posters all over the room and it said how many more and it meant subtraction. So you're going to have to use some subtraction somehow to get me to a final answer and I'm going to make sure that you give me good word form. I am a little bit concerned that this wasn't a change problem. I know those ratio change problems, those are the ones that get us and there could be one on your test. So do be ready for that if it happens. I'm just giving you a sampling of the things we might see. Okay. For the next section, we are switching gears. We're moving from ratio to rates. And again, I can't remember if I told you odds or even, so I'll just go back to my odds for a little bit. Here we're talking about rates. The first section tells me, state whether each statement is expressed as a unit rate. Well, remember these words, unit rate, and hopefully you see them sitting in your notes. Unit rate. It means out of one, or compared to one. So let's give this a try with number one. A wheel makes 72 revolutions per minute. Well, I see that there are 72 revolutions, but it's being compared to the number of minutes. What does per minute mean? Oh, it means out of one minute. So you're going to tell me whether you believe this is or is not a unit rate. Okay? Try the same thing with number two when you're ready. Make sure that you're looking to see if it is a unit rate, if it's comparing to a unit of one or comparing, or if it's out of one, I should say. Let's fast forward to number three. It says we should solve and show our work. A florist sells three similar bouquets of flowers for $78. What is the cost per bouquet? Well, real quick sketch. I've got three bouquets. It's kind of like three units. And I know the total cost. It says that the total cost is $78. Now they're asking me the cost per bouquet. So when we did this before, we might just draw another bar and we might show kind of this is our unknown or we could maybe just shade one of these and just say hmm how do I find this answer so very similarly to our ratio you chase the number here I have 78 and I'm splitting it into how many equal parts three or three bouquets right so three units three bouquets you should be able to find me the price per bouquet in just a moment please make sure you're giving me words back so you will get points for showing adequate work so I can see your procedures and your steps. Those things that happen in your head, they can't get points unless I see them on your paper. Let's move on to number five. So down here at the bottom, it's still in the same section, solve and show your work. It says, Jonas types 560 words in 20 minutes. How many words can he type in one hour? Well, if you remember, we used to set these up with bar models pretty quickly. So here I have 20 minutes is my time, and what can he accomplish during that time? 560 words. Okay. 
Okay. And now they're asking me, what can he accomplish in one hour? Oh, I noticed there's something tricky about this one. They went from minutes, which are quite small, to hours. So what do we know about minutes and hours? Hopefully you're thinking, well, hours are longer than minutes, right? And how many minutes are in an hour? You could check somewhere, maybe in your, um, in your planner. You could look at those conversion pages. But hopefully you know this one because it could be on a test and you won't be allowed to use your, your conversions exactly. I know that one hour is the same as, oops, one hour is the same as 60 minutes. So what I'm thinking is this bar has to be longer, right? And the question is, how many words can you type during that time? Well, there's a couple ways to get there. Um, one way that I see is to go ahead and notice that 20 can quickly convert to 60, or we could quickly multiply to get there. So I could say 20 times something gets me to 60, and whatever that is would also help me to multiply my number of words. So just giving you a rough setup here, um, someone else might say your bar model isn't drawn quite accurately. In fact, there should be how many of these that fit inside? Hopefully you notice that three sets of 20 would make up a bar model of 60 minutes. And that would also help me to figure out a total in a minute. It's kind of like they're giving me the unit rate for 20 minutes, right? Or in 20 minutes. And I'm going to write that three times or record that three times to find an answer. Oh my goodness. Um, number six I was not planning on doing, but look at that name. Stephen Owl. Stephen Owl. What does this say? Oh, I figured it out. <laughs> that took me a minute. <laughs> Did you get it? Number six. We are only focusing in on the odds of my video, but this is funny. Um, Stefano, put a space in here, walks two-fifths miles. There's lots of strange spacing going on here. In one-fourth of an hour. <laughs> what is Stefano's speed in miles per hour? Lots of spacing issues. Sorry. Um, I think we could probably go ahead and set this one up. I know that distance, rate, and time has given my students a lot of trouble, so maybe it's worth looking at this, even though it's not an odd number problem, and I honestly don't know if I assigned odds or even, so we'll find that out soon when I see you guys. Um, anyway, if I know that he walks two-fifths of a mile in one-fourth of an hour, I could draw my bar model really quickly to show fourths. And I know that in this first fourth, he's going to make it two-fifths of a mile. Well, what is Stefano's speed in miles per hour? Meaning, how many miles will he make it in this entire hour? So, this would be um, in one fourth of an hour. And this would be in one full hour. To figure out this total distance, well, we would take this two fifths and figure out how many two fifths I need here. It looks like I'm going to need one, two, three, four of them. I think you'll be able to quickly get to an answer. Now I'm wondering if those of you who are trying my dirt triangle, my distance, rate, and time triangle will have the same amount of luck. Distance, rate, and time. So we know his distance, right? We know that he's moving two-fifths um, of a mile in one-fourth of an hour. Um, this one gets a little bit tricky because I guess that would be my distance, two-fifths of a mile, and my time would be one-fourth of an hour. So I could try to figure out his rate here. And to do that, if you remember, we did a division. So it'd be like rate times time equals distance. And once we figured out that rate, we'd have to take that rate times maybe an hour. I think you might be able to get there. I'm gonna take a look at this real quickly. So this would be like a three exchange flip or multiplying by the reciprocal. Sorry, I got eight fifths as my rate. Uh, what does that mean to me? That means one and three fifths. Uh, that would be miles per hour. I wonder if that's what you get here. Two fifths plus two fifths plus two fifths plus two fifths. Two, four, six, eight. Oh, looks like we get eight fifths. Looks like you could get the same great answer. I wasn't thinking about that because sometimes we don't put those fractions in my dirt triangle or my distance rate and time triangle. Looks like we can get to a good answer. Looks like I might have given that to you quite by accident. I think we're ready to switch gears here, so I think we're switching over from uh, rates to percent at this point. Let's see if that's true. Yeah, there aren't many rate word problems, are there? I guess our emphasis today is going to be more on percent. Here we go. So moving on to the next part of our practice test 
our percent. This comes from chapter six. This would be located in your red textbook with Math and Focus, the one that comes from sixth grade. It says, fill in the blanks. Well, number one, 85 percent expressed as a fraction in simplest form. Well, this is where you're going to have to know your skills. I'm not allowing flip books on our test. On our unit test, you're just going to have to know how to handle this. So maybe you're thinking, I have a percent, and I'm trying to get to a fraction. Well, hopefully remember, percentage means out of 100. So I'm already looking at a fraction if I write this over 100. This is awesome, except that it also says simplest form. And I know my students sometimes don't like to do this next move, but it will cost you points if you don't. So what can I divide nicely into 85 and 100? Well, hopefully you know they're both divisible by 5. I know 5 goes into 100 20 times. 5 goes into 85 kind of like 5 goes into 50 plus 35, right? Um, 5 goes into 50 10 times, 5 goes into 35 7 times, looks like it goes in there 17 times, okay? So 17 20 is it in simplest form? It is. Here's the final answer. Remember that you will be asked to go from a percent to a fraction and to do that you can either divide by 100% or perhaps if you're giving a given a really nice whole number percentage, you could just write it as a fraction over 100 and then simplify. Okay, number two I'm not going to talk about. Let's fast forward to number three. Four ninths expressed as a percentage. Four ninths. We're going from a fraction of four ninths to a percentage. Well, if you were looking in your flip book, because I know you're studying from a flip book, perhaps any fraction on the planet, the nice ones, the mean ones, the ugly ones, the the strange ones, they all can get there by multiplying by 100%. So let's give that a try. I'm going to take my four ninths, I'm going to multiply by 100%, and do remember that this is 100% over what? Over one. We saw that earlier on something else we were doing in a video, I think from my last lesson. So do be careful that you're setting this up correctly. Do look for cross simplifying. Can we do any cross simplifying here? The answer is no, so let's just multiply. We're going to get 400 ninths percent. But if I wrote that on your test or your quiz, you'd be like, Mrs. Schumann, are you not feeling well today? And the answer is maybe I'm not, because that looks like an improper fraction to me. So let's try simplifying. We would divide the top by the bottom. We would take 400 divided by 9. And we know 9 doesn't go into 4, but it goes into 40 four times. When you subtract, you're left with 4. And you bring down the next place value. And someone's going to say, oh my gosh, I'm seeing a pattern here. That seems to be repeating, repeating, repeating. And they're right. If I went to decimal land, this would continue for the rest of your lives, my friends. In fact, this would never, ever, ever, ever end to be continued. So there are two decent answers here. One of them is to stop when you get to this decimal point. One of them is to write this as a mixed number. So to do that, we would start here and move around. I have to make sure that I grab the right remaining pieces here. We would move around what I sometimes name the ring of fire. You have to be careful that you set this up correctly. This would read as 44 and 4 ninths percent. That's exact. It's precise. It's accurate. I don't want to see you rounding unless they ask for it. So the other way of doing this would also be okay to show this repeating decimal with bar notation over the tenths place and make sure that you're telling me that this is still a percentage. Let's fast forward to the next section here where they ask me more open-ended questions. So moving here where it says the quantity represented. Okay, I find the quantity represented by each percent. So let's see if we can clear our screen for you. Number five, I want 48% of 725 kilograms. Well, someone out there is going to say, I just know how to multiply and divide and get there. And you absolutely can. There is a really nice strategy when you know a percentage of a number. Of is telling you to multiply. So maybe you take this 48% and call it 48 hundredths, which then maybe you call 0 and 48 hundredths as decimal form. And then you multiply it times 725. I have not shown you to do that a whole lot because this percent proportion works for even challenging ones. Let's use percent proportion now. So to do that, my 100 always goes in the second denominator. The 725 kilo kilograms, sorry, is of or of a total. So I know that that's the denominator of my first fraction. This 48%, well, it's a percentage, so it goes in the numerator of the second fraction. Remember, my percents are always on the right. My quantities are always on the left. 
Well, there's an unknown piece sitting here, so I'll put a variable there or an x to show that I need to solve. Well, you are not allowed to cross simplify. Be careful. This is an equal sign. Be careful before you cross the road. So we check the fraction on the left to see if we can just simplify this fraction. The answer is no. We check the fraction on the right to see if we can simplify, and the answer is yes. These both divide by 4. 4 goes into 48 12 times, and 4 goes into 125 times. At that point, we're really ready to multiply. And someone else might say, oh my gosh, I wasn't going to simplify because I like dividing by 100s. Well, then you'd be in great shape also. Let's go ahead and see what we get by cross products. So 25 times x gets me 25 x's. And 12 times 725, I do not know. I bet I can find out. Actually, I could probably do it faster than that because I know 10 times that is 7,250. And 2 times that is uh, 1,450. Okay, so I kind of did some mental math on, him, on this. Looks like I'm getting 8,900. And you could always double check that because, again, I'm trying some quick mental math. I had some students request a video, so I'm trying to pick one out really fast. If you can catch an error, bring it to my attention. We can always fix it up. Maybe it's worth a prize. Well, let's get this variable alone. To do that, I need to divide both sides by 25. All right, well, on the left, I'll be left with x, and I'll bring down my equation, or my equal sign, to keep the king safe. I want to figure out how many 25s go in here. So you could set it up as long division, or maybe you could think about quarters. I know it's going to take me four quarters to make every one of those dollars. So it's kind of like 4 times 89 would be another way to see that. Um, maybe you're not thinking that way. So just again, long division and figure out how many 25s go inside. We're getting really close. Once you get this, it will be a quantity. It will not be a percent. Notice that it is the missing piece on the quantity or on the first fraction of my percent proportion. You will use a similar method for number six because again, I'm given a percent and the total of 138 pounds. Um, I also noticed these both have labels, so you're going to give me at least labels back, even though they're not word problems. Number seven, this is where it gets a little more interesting, and this is where students oftentimes struggle, and you're not using a flip book on my unit test, so I do want you to be kind of prepared with how to handle this. That's why we emphasize percent proportion, because if you can set up the proportion accurately, you can get good answers every time. Well, here it says 45% of something. We don't know of what is 108. Well, if I dissect this a little bit, I can use percent proportion again. I know that 45% is a percentage, and percentage is always written over 100. I also know that this says is 108, meaning that this is the part of the whole. The whole is the unknown piece. It's going to be critical that you set these up correctly or things will go wrong. Well, let's do some simplifying if there is any. The fraction on the left, nothing to do. But the fraction on the right, these both divide by 5. And I know 5 goes into 45 9 times, and 5 goes into 120 times. I think we're ready for cross products, which remember we set equal to each other. We haven't done these for a real long time, so it's important to me that you remember that when we multiply, those cross products are equal to each other. I want to double check this. 2 times 108 is 216, and there's a 0 at the back because it's 20 times 108. This looks good. We are ready to get the king alone, so we're going to divide both sides by 9. And I know 9 goes in here once, so I'm going to get one awesome x or one awesome king. And I can show that just with an x by itself. I bring down the equal sign, also known as the drawbridge, and I'm going to divide to see what I get. I'm expecting that you're going to get something close to double 108. And I say that because 45% is almost 50%. It's almost half of the whole thing. So I'm expecting my answer to be close to, say... 216? Maybe close. Okay? And actually, that's interesting that I see a 216 when we're doing our division here. So give it a try. Take us to a final answer. And you'll also want to be careful that I think the rest in this section, uh, number 6 in particular, oh, no, there are no more down here. I was going to say the rest in this section probably follow the same setup. But unfortunately, we only have you practicing one, one of those right now. All right. Let's turn the page. We have a few more percent problems to look at if I can find them. So the last section here, some percent word problems. And I know you've practiced some percent word problems in percent change recently, 
So this is just going to um, build on to the things that we already know. Uh, number eight is technically even, but I know that these word problems have been a struggle. So let's spend time on the last word problems and then we'll call it a day. So it says solve, show your work. Number eight. Of the 140 pages in a book, 25% of them have illustrations. How many pages have illustrations? Well, before I go anywhere, I like with my word problems to be able to visualize what's happening. So it says of the 140 pages in a book. Sounds to me like this is a total. Which means on my bar model, I'm going to show 140 pages is the same as 100% of that book. And then it goes on to say 25% of them have illustrations. 25% have illustrations. Well, maybe you're thinking, you know, 25% is like one quarter. So I would label that 25% and I might call it pictures or illustrations. There we go. Okay. How many pages have illustrations? Well, be careful. They didn't ask how many do not have illustrations. Sometimes they do that just to mix things up. They asked me how many pictures or illustrated pages that is. So this is my unknown piece. Let's go ahead and set up our percent proportion because again, I'm given a percent and a quantity. I'm not given two quantities. So I think this will work really well for us if we remember that 100 goes in the second fraction in the denominator. We know this 100% is the same as 140 pages, meaning the totals both go on the bottom of my fraction. Well, 25% is the percentage they're referring to. Percent is always the top right. It goes on the percent side of my percent proportion. And the unknown piece must be sitting here in the numerator. What I don't know is how many pages that 25% represents yet. Well, remember with percent proportion, we cannot cross simplify. I cannot cross simplify. Careful before you cross the road. So instead we look left. Can I simplify this fraction on the left? No. Look right. Can I simplify the fraction here? Yes. 25 and 100 both divide by 25. This would simplify to 1 fourth. Now you're ready for cross products. And remember cross products are set equal to each other. So I should get the same result. They will be equivalent on both sides. Well, x times 4 is 4x and 1 times 140 is 140. I want to isolate my variable. I want to divide both sides by 4. I'm dividing by 4 to make this cancel out, to give me one awesome king or variable in a minute. If I do that to the left, I do that to the right. Well, again, I'll be left with one awesome king and I can show that just with an x and I'll bring down the drawbridge, also known as the equal sign, or the road. I must keep the king six. And I know 4 goes into 100 25 times and 4 goes into 40 10 times. So I'm thinking that's like 25 plus 10 more. I should get a result of 35. Here it seems to say, um, I'm trying to figure out how many pages have illustrations. So 35 pages have illustrations. Could I actually turn it into a sentence? Um, probably. I'd have to turn that maybe into word form to start with the word 35. Uh, another way of seeing this, and I know someone out there is like, how come you did all that? Couldn't you have just divided 140 by 4 because there are four parts here? The answer is yes, I could have. The problem is, what if you get to the actual test and it's not something nice like 25%? What if it's 35%? Or what if it's 75%? Oh, that one wouldn't be too bad. But what if it's something odd that we're not really used to? Well, then you'll have to have another strategy behind you, like percent proportion. Or if you decide to do it with a mental math strategy and you show me that you're going to divide by 4, you might even want to check it with another method. Let's look at number 9. Um, this is an odd number problem, which hopefully I did assign to your class. And this should give us a different type of percent problem that maybe we haven't seen yet. Number 9. The price of the bicycle that Rocco wants to buy is $282. How much will Rocco pay for the bicycle if the state tax rate is 4%? Oh, do you know that? I go to the store sometimes, the dollar store, and I have a dollar ready to roll. And all of a sudden, they don't let me buy the item. Because what do they want? A dollar and six cents. Well, how does that happen? Oh, they add tax, right? So in this case, there's state tax of 4%. So Rocco, I don't know where you're living, but I might need to consider moving to buy my bike. I noticed that he's buying this bike for $282. And taxes. This is added on. And this is tough because as a sixth grader, you might not be a big consumer yet. Maybe you haven't had to deal with taxes a whole lot. Your parents just take care of those things and you don't think about it. Well, 
Um, the truth is, it's probably something that's going to become more and more relevant as you move forward or as you mature. So we're practicing it now with something that might be a little bit unfamiliar. Let's give it a try anyway. So the price of this bicycle, let's visualize. He wants to buy the whole bike, right? Not just the wheel. Okay, so that's 100% of the bicycle. How much does that cost, Rocco? Oh, well, that's $282, right? But he's not just going to be able to hand them $282 and ride off into the sunset. He is going to have to make sure he pays his taxes on the bike. So the state tax is like a little extra amount. So even though we haven't talked a lot about this tax idea, and this also happens with, um, I'm trying to think of other situations, um, maybe if there's a bonus, or there are other pieces that might make this bar model grow. In this case, with taxes, that's the case, right? Or if I'm going to increase the price to sell it, we saw this before on our last word problems with percent change a little bit. This represents 4%. Well, he can't just pay the 4% tax and go, thanks for the bike. He can't just pay the 100% of the bike, the 282, and say, thanks for the bike. He has to pay both. So what we're trying to find here, because it says, how much will Rocco pay? This is a total that we're trying to find, a total he's going to pay with tax. Total with tax. So to show that, that's this unknown piece. Well, the good news is, we actually know what percent this represents. Is 100% of the bike plus 4% of the tax. So this is X as far as the dollars. We don't know that. We're going to find out. But it is 104%. Now someone else might not handle that this way. They might just take the 4% and figure that out and then have to add it on to figure out Rocco's overall price. But if I were you, I would save myself a step. I treat this like 104%. Now I know that we have an improper fraction that might happen here, and I know my students don't like that a whole lot. So I will set this up one more move, but then I'm going to trust that you can solve it. So 100% always goes in the bottom right. And we know that's the same as, be careful, $282. I see it in my bar model. What I don't know is how much he's actually going to pay. Okay, so this is kind of like that new price, right? I have to figure out this new price here a little bit with the taxes included. But I do know that that's the same as 104%. It's this total bar plus a little bit more. Well, now you would look to see if you can simplify either fraction, unless you really like something about your cross products that might happen here, and you're going to solve for x. You're going to try to find me Rocco's price. Do you make sure that you have maybe a bar model, but definitely percent proportion or a strategy that I can follow? I see some of you not taking the time to write out your cross products, or I see some of you not taking the time to show me how to isolate your variable or get the x alone. So make sure you do that. If you need to divide both sides, of an equation by 100, show it. Or in a minute, if you're going to divide by something else because you're simplifying this fraction, please show that. Number 10. This might be the grand finale, my percent friends. A teacher is just as happy. Here we go. It says, there are 650 visitors to an art gallery on Friday. There are 10% more visitors on Saturday than on Friday. How many visitors are there on Saturday? This kind of looks like a change problem to me a little bit because it says that there's 10% more. So something's changing. So if I were to grab this important information, it sounds to me like an increase. It sounds like there's a percent increase. Okay. Um, here it also says there are 650 visitors to an art gallery on Friday. 650 visitors sounds to me like the total or maybe the original quantity. So just writing myself a little shortcut here. The question is, how many visitors are there on Saturday? So I'm looking for how many visitors in a minute. I'm going to look for the total visitors on Saturday. Um, can we go ahead and sketch this out real quick? Well, how many visitors were there on Friday? That's the 100% or the original. That's the same as 650 visitors. But then it says that there are more. There's 10% more happening here. So this bar is going to grow. This is 10% more visitors. And what I'm trying to answer in a minute is, well, how many visitors does that represent? This happened on um, Saturday, if you remember. Friday's number is here. Saturday grew. So we're going to represent this as 100 plus 10% more. Oops, 110% is what that's supposed to say. And I don't know how many people that is, but I could find out. Next, you'll set up your percent proportion. Now, someone else would say, no, I'm just going to figure out what 10% is, which you could. And because it's in increase, a percent increase, when you're done finding the 
you have to add it on to 650 people or visitors. I'm hopeful that um, getting these set up with you was maybe a step in the right direction. I took you through a few more answers than I meant to do. Um, sometimes I'm guilty of that. Um, I do want you to be able to do your own thinking and feel ready for this test. So um, keep on practicing. If you're looking for more practice, um, you can obviously go through previous videos. You can break out your math and focus textbook, either online or the one that you have in hand. And I do make myself available to students who need it, so don't be afraid to ask questions if you need to between now and test day.